Hello and welcome to today's physics lecture now wherein we shall be understanding the phase diagram with the help of a numerical. Now observe in the given circuit for this circuit it is given that the alternating EMF is equal to 50 root 2 sine 1000 T. And for this particular circuit we need to find out the value of the alternating current. Over here in the circuit if you observe minutely the value of the resistance or the, this resistor is been given as 7 ohm. The value of this like inductor is given as 2 milli Henry and the value of this capacitor is given, given as 1 milli farad, right? Now this milli we know that it is simply equals to 10 to the power minus C if we wanted to convert it into Henry or farad. Right. Now, before we go into the deeper concepts, first of all, we need to derive this equation of this alternating EMF. So, it is given as that E is simply equals to 50 root 2 sine of 1000 T. Now, if we actually compare this equation with the equation we actually got during the time of the discussion that uh, how we could represent the, an LCL circuit, as you can see that over here this is L, this is C, and this is R, right? So, we could actually compare this equation of this EMF as equals to E naught multiplied by sine of omega t where E0 is known as the peak value of the ordinary current and omega is known as like this is omega or the angular velocity with which the phaser will actually rotate and so omega is simply equals to 2 pi f or 2 pi divided by g capital T obviously where capital T is known as the time period right now computing it we could get that actually this E0 is equals to 50 root 2 and also we could understand that this particular omega this is simply equals to 1000 right so from this two like a comparison we could actually state that E naught over here is given as 50 root 2 whereas the value of omega is been given as 1000 or is equals to simply 10 to the power 3 right now if we actually intend to find out the XL and XC which are basically the reactances of this uh, like inductor and the capacitor respectively we could find it out as XL which is been denoted as omega L will simply be equals to the value of omega we can replace it by 10 to the power 3 right this actually this omega the unit of the omega is simply equals to radian per second as you know so this will be 10 to the power 3 radian per second multiplied by omega L the value of L it is given as 2 milli henry which means that it will be equal to 2 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 Henry. Right? So, we could see that actually 10 to the power 3 and 10 to the power minus 3 will cancel out each other, leaving only 2 over here. And Henry, radian per second, will give us the value of the ohm because we are actually finding out the reactances. Right? And this will be Excel, that is, means the inductive reactance. So, its value will come out to be as equivalent to 2 ohm right now over here if we wish to find out the xc which obviously means that we are going to find out the capacitive reactance in that circumstances x c will simply be equals to 1 divided by omega c will simply be equals to 1 divided by the value of omega is 1000 
multiplied by the value of C. The value of C is equal to 1 million para. So we can write it as 1 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3. Now observe over here actually we could see that this thousand will cancel out this 10 to the power minus 3 leaving only 1 over here and the units will be 1 ohm because again we are actually interested in finding out the reactances right so this will be the capacitive reactance as equals to 1 ohm and this L omega or this omega L as the 2 ohm that is the inductive reactance now if we could actually remember from our previous classes that once we did mention in the cases of let's say for example in uh, discussing about LCL circuit that if actually XL is greater than say for example this XC in that circumstances actually I or the alternating current will actually lag behind and the E or the alternating EMF will lag forward so we have already seen that XL if this is greater than XC we can understand that I lags now again if we want to understand it with the help of the phasor diagrams we can let us see how say for example this is a phasor diagram Over here, let us say, take us for example that the E is given as this equation 50 root to sine of the thousand E, right? So, for the sake of convenience, let us check that this is basically like this where actually we can see first of all that the current is going like this right and we could observe that if this is the current flowing through the resistor R, this will be IR. And we know that if this is IR, the voltage or the potential drop across this will be in the same phase. So we can say it as, say for example, the V. Now, over here, if this is the V we take, we know that actually in the cases of a purely capacitive circuit, the current leads than the voltage by a phase difference of pi by 2. Which means over here, this black line, this will indicate the I for the capacitance which is passing, passing through the capacitance will be IC. And over here we could get that this is IL. As we also know that for a purely inductive circuit, the current will actually lag behind this voltage by a phase difference of pi by 2. This is a leading and this is a lagging. Now over here, if we do observe that actually this IC is smaller than IL, which obviously is indicated by XL is greater than XC, which means the I lags behind. So we can take that over here there will be formed by the vector addition of IL and IC this point at this particular point this will simply be equals to IL minus IC now we have got that what will be the IL minus IC and also we get to what is will be the IR now after getting I L minus I C, we also need to do the vector addition of the I L minus I C and the I R. Now if you do look actually, this is making and forming a pi by 2 angle over here. So by the method of say like parallelogram law of vector addition, we can find out that 
somewhere here the is will come right and the i s vector is basically the vector addition of this i r and the i l minus i c and what is i l minus i c this is again the vector addition of i l and i c right now if you to look behind actually we got that i s is lagging behind this voltage this is what it is said over here that i will lag behind and obviously if this is lagging behind this will be making an angle of phi so we can say over here that this is the particular angle of say phi now to find out the value of phi let us see how we could do the things but first of all we need to actually find out the this is the lcl circuit so we need to find out the impedance for this lcl circuit which means that the effective whatever the resistance has been provided for the flow of this current we need to find it out or the impedance so to find out the impedance we can find out the lcr impedance it is basically equals to z and we have known that z will simply be equals to under root of r square plus xl minus xc whole square right we know it from the representation of the lcr circuit now if we do wish to find out this value obviously observe that what is the value of r the value of r is 7 so we can replace the value of r as 7 squared plus now what is the value of xl the value of xl is equal to 2 ohm and this value of x is equal to 1 omega so we can say it as 2 minus 1 whole square so the 2 minus 1 whole square will actually give us a value of 1 and 7 square will give us a value of 49 which means that it will be under root of 49 plus 1 that is will be equal to under root of 50 which obviously we can write it as 5 root 2 right so 5 root 2 ohm will actually be the impedance of this LCR circuit now also we know that how the cells in the circuit was formed we know by this the triangle law that if over here we do fix up r over here we will fix up xl minus xc then over here we will get the impedance or as equals to under root of r square plus xl minus xc whole square right now over here we will get that phi the phi for which we have seen this in the phaser diagram right so to find out the value of phi, obviously we have to use either of the generated functions like sine, cos, or tan. It's very easy to use tan over here in this scenario. So we can see that in this scenario, tan phi will simply be equal to x l minus x c divided by r. It simply will be equals to 2 minus 1 divided by the value of the resistance of 7 will simply equals to 1 divided by 7. Or else we can write it as the pi will simply be equals to tan inverse of 1 by 7. Right? Now if this is actually equals to z we can find out the value of the peak value of current now we know that i naught multiplied by z or the impedance is simply equals to the peak value of this ordinary emf or else we can write it as that i naught is equal to simply e naught divided by z 
And what is the value of P0? We need actually find it out that P0 will be equal to 50 root 2. So we can replace the E0 as 50 root 2 and we found out the Z. The Z is equal to 5 root 2. So cancelling them out, we will actually get that I0 is simply equals to this root 2, root 2 will cancel out and this 5 will cancel out this as 10, as 10 ampere. So this is the peak value of the current, right? Now, we know that the equation that we could form out from this phase diagram is that if over here the V is like this and it is stated as E equals to the E0, E equals to E0 sine of omega t, then obviously the value of this I s or the I which we are finding out will be equals to I0, the peak value of the current, multiplied by sine of omega t counterclockwise was positive but this is clockwise so we will take it as minus so sine of omega t minus of this phi so we can write i as equals to i naught sine of omega t the omega t is over here as thousand t because we are seeing this line minus this is on the downward side the i is lagging behind which means that it will be negated by an angle or the phase difference of phi right now so we can write this equation of i as equals to the value of i naught we could replace it by 10 ampere multiplied by sine what is omega the value of omega is 1000 so we can write it as 1000 t minus now what is the value of phi the value of phi is simply equals to the tan inverse of 1 by 7 or of tan 1 by 7 tan inverse of 1 by 7 so this is the expression for i or the alternating emf that is asked in this particular numerical that find the alternating current with the help of the phasor diagram we have seen in the phasor diagram that actually the i is lagging behind and how now say for example in this reportable given question it is not mentioned over here but if it has asked that find out the power factor for the power factor we know that power factor is equal to cos phi and from saying this triangle we can find out the value of cos phi as simply equals to r divided by z right r divided by z and what is the value of r over here the value of r is equal to 7 ohm and what is the value of z we did find out it as 5 root 2 ohm so the power factor will actually is a dimensionless quantity it will be equal to 7 divided by 5 root 2 so we can say that in this particular given numerical the power factor is equal to 7 divided by 5 root 2 right thank you